What's up, guys? Rev Sauce 9. Make sure to rate, like, and subscribe. And make sure, guys, to be watching the video, man. Like, seriously, watch the videos. You get a lot of information. So, according to Sean Ross Sapp and a lot of other wrestling outlets, it's not looking good. Uh, Seth Rollins may be out for a significant amount of time. So, he's got a torn MCL and a partial tour of the meniscus. And, man... That shit is gnarly. Not gonna not gonna front, ladies and gentlemen. That is shit is freaking gnarly, man. Like I, I feel so bad. Like you can't help but not feel bad for this situation. Now it's Charlotte Flair. Uh then you had Cora Jade went down with an ACL. Now you have this. And it's like, wow. Um, they're saying when he went for the stomp, he could have broken it or torn it. Um, they said earlier in the match he could have torn it, and he just kept going on. Um, but it's not looking good, and it's also from these reports are saying that they don't know. Seth Rollins doesn't know if it's going to require surgery or rehab time. And they're saying from what I'm reading on here on Google for the MCL tear, it usually takes about 16 weeks of recovery, and then the other one takes literally three to six months. So I'm assuming they're going to go for surgery to correct that tear so it doesn't turn into anything else. But this is unfortunate, man. Like, th this is like, I, I'm, I feel bad because he's getting a WrestleMania push. He's been carrying that title. He's been the workhorse of WWE. Um, you know, Seth Rollins, man, this is disappointing. You know, in a contract year for him, um, I feel so bad. Like, you know, him and CM Punk were going to go at each other, what it looked like. It looked like they were possibly going to have something to do with that at Mania. Possibly something at the Elimination Chamber. Now, where does WWE go from here? They could have him technically come out and address the audience. And you can have Damian Priest probably come out, hit him with the finisher real quick. One, two, three. That's a quick way of getting the title off of Rollins and have him just go into the shadows and be injured. He's going to miss WrestleMania for sure. There's no doubt about that at this point. He's going to miss WrestleMania at this point. I don't see Rollins coming back unless he wants to rehab. But from what the report said, both of these injuries, one takes a literally six weeks to eight weeks or longer in, or 16 weeks. And the other one does take, you know, four to 12 weeks. So like at the end of the day, four to 12 weeks, if you're rehabbing and then the, the MCL one is the, is the, it's six, it's six weeks to heal with, um, if it's a grade three, if it's a grade four or higher tear, it's going to, it's going to take a while. This one here, if the meniscus, it may require surgery rehabbing. If it's, if it's a mid meniscus tear, it takes 12 weeks, four to 12 weeks, which wouldn't keep him out of action for very too long. But if it's the if it's the other, it's gonna take him three to six months, which will probably require surgery. And unfortunately, from this reports, it just looks like you know from Sean Ross Sapp and a lot of other places, it just looks like Rollins is gonna be out of action for a while. In a contract year for him, it just looks like he's gonna be out. Now, as I said, what could they do to take the belt off of him without having to do a tournament? or relinquishing a belt or anything like that, what they could do, two things they could do. They can hold the belt off of Royal Rumble, lead it into Elimination Chamber, and whoever wins the chamber becomes World Heavyweight Champion. What they could do is have Damian Priest. If they want to do a quick action thing, they can have Damian Priest possibly win the title, cash in, do his finisher, choke slam, one, two, three, devastate Rollins, one, two, three, Rollins could put him over. He becomes champion. That'll be the quick all, the fix all. Um, and then they make Drew McIntyre and his match more, um, you know, they put more on the line on that one with Drew versus um, Damian. You can have Damian hold it for a while. You can have Damian go in against CM Punk. I mean, it's kind of disappointing because it hurts a lot of the plans WWE was trying to do with Rollins. Rollins was carrying this company on his back and it's really disappointed. First it was his back. He got over that and now this. So it's a shame Rollins is probably going to be on the shelf for about, I would say about six months, give or take, I mean, say three or six. If they do it right, they could have Priest win it. That makes that um, money in the bank believable now. 
and then they could turn around and have Punk hold that belt. Um, you know, there's many things they could do at this point. Um, it's just disappointing all around. Do they hold it until Elimination Chamber, keep it off of Rumble? Why would they do that? You can make Drew and Damian Priest's match more marquee now with that title on the line. Or, or what they could do if they wanted to, they can have Gunther come out. Gunther can relinquish the Intercontinental belt. And he can go after Rollins and they can call, he can call a shot. And then just beat Rollins real quick. But then it, you know, it, any which way they do this, I'm more of the money in the bank, cash that in, just get it out the way, have him get the title. And or Triple H comes out, basically says there's going to be, Triple H is going to have to be involved somewhat in this. I, I believe there, there, there's no, there's no perfect answer to this because, you know, Rollins did have a storyline ready to go with him and Punk for Mania that they could have led into uh, perf, uh, Australia, honestly, it's it sucks. This this is all shitty. Between Charlotte Flair and him now, it's like wow. And Core Jade, like Core Jade, was expected a huge push by WWE in general, and and that sucks for NXT because she was like high on the card to be the next women's champion, um, next to Nikita Lyons. And um, I mean, shit happens in wrestling, man. Look what happened last year with AEW and Dante Martin and all that, man. That that shit's gnarly, man. Look at all these like injuries. Look at Ray Phoenix over on AEW, man. That's that's insane. He still hasn't recovered. Um, you know, so honestly, and Danielson too, like with his amazing amount of injuries that he's had with the orbital bone and things like that. So, you know, I really hope Rollins a speedy recovery out of all this because it sucks for him. And all the time that he built, I would be super frustrated at this point. And this is in a contract year for him. His contract goes up in August. So does he renew with the company? What is he going to do at this point? We're going to find out this summer, but he is very injured if this is the case. And I feel really bad because, you know, WWE kept putting him out there and putting him out there and putting him out there and putting him. He's a workhorse. Rollins carried the company. Love him, hate him, whatever. He did more work than Roman. I will say he was the the champion last year. I would say there's a reason why Seth Rollins was in the in the top five of the PWI best wrestler of the year. There's a reason for it. And I think he's way better than Roman. But Roman carries the company. And I like Roman in certain circumstances. You know, now do you bring Brock Lesnar in? You know, what are they going to do to carry that title at that point for Monday Night Raw? And with Monday Night Raw trying to get a TV rights deal with somebody, WWE's trying to shop that, you don't have your lead guy. Who are you going to put in that place? And I think it all roads leads to CM Punk. CM Punk drives ratings. CM Punk drives views. On, and, you know, minus his regurgitation of AEW stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, what do you do? And it's a hard... Triple H is going to have a hard spot in Hard Rock. He's not going to be able to please everybody. But I think the best thing he can do right now is either vacate that title and have it hold until elimination chamber. And then you have punk win the belt in the elimination chamber. Right. And then you have him carry it into WrestleMania. And maybe you have priest cash it at that point to be, you know, the guy or what you do is you could have Damien priest cash in, take the belt, go into uh Royal rumble, have a quick match with drew McIntyre, have Priest win that match, have him go into the Elimination Chamber, and then have him lose to Punk. Punk carries it. Maybe Gunther steps up at this point, vacates the Intercontinental belt. Maybe they do something in between Mania and that. It, it, Triple H is in a hard spot in a hard rock, unfortunately. This is where they're at. This is where WWE's at. It's going to be very interesting what WWE does, and I hope, you know, because people are going to be mad that this title's going to be off the card for Royal Rumble. Um, you know, what do they do? They're going to have to have something go on. They're going to have to have somebody carry the flag of Monday Night Raw at this point. I think, I think Damian Priest would be your best answer at this point because you got to do something with his money in the bank. You got to now make that something. So you have him win. Maybe the judgment day kick him out when he does win the title. Um, they're going to have to, they're going to have to speed up that stuff going on with, da with Damian Priest. They're going to have to speed that up big time now. Um, or they vacate it for Elimination Chamber and you have Punk win it. But, you know, again, or, or 
Maybe you have Gunther in between all that since it's going to be vacated. Maybe you have Gunther go in into Elimination Chamber and win it. Gunther's been way over with Triple H and everybody for what it looks like management. It's just tough, man. This shit's tough. I love WWE. And by the way, before people say I'm some type of uh, I take this too serious. Yeah, I kind of do because, you know, that's that's what we do. This is my hobby. This is what I this is what I enjoy talking wrestling and trying to find fantasy booking ways. We're going to see on Monday what they do. But all roads leads to Rollins vacating this. And I know he's not going to want to vacate this. You could tell he's not happy about this whole situation. But out of it, you can have some fun with it. You can have Damian Priest come in and cash in. They could do something really quick. Maybe they have a gauntlet match. They could do so many different things here in this point to make an interesting tell. They got to do something quick. So what I think they do is they have they have Damian Priest come out. He doesn't vet K. He gets to it. Damian Priest cashes in. They have a quick little match. He does it on one foot. And Rollins puts him over. I think it'll be a quick, easy peasy deal. That's the cheesy way, the hokey pokey thing to do. But at the end of the day, I think that's what's best for business. You have him go into Royal Rumble, gets Drew. It makes the match a little bit more prestigious, more marquee. Or you could have Gunther relinquish. You could build a whole story throughout the night. And then Triple H comes out, basically goes, well, hey, look, we're going to vacate the title because you're hurt. Obviously, you're not medically cleared. Priest comes out at the end, goes, no, 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 no. I, and then Ron goes, no, no, I will, you know, I will literally go on. Bump, bump, bump. They do a match real quick at the main event real quick. Priest chokes Sam's him. One, two, three. He's the champion. He walks out. Is it going to be a hokey pokey finish? Sure. Is it best for business? Yes. Rollins needs to go away for a while, and, and unfortunately, it, it sucks, but that's what they're going to have to do. Anyway, this is my opinion. I'm going through every situation here. It's a it's a partial torn meniscus and a torn M MCL. It's disappointing, but what can you do at this point? I'll have links down below to the articles to this. You guys can read for yourself. It's reported by Fightful, and when Fightful reports something, it's usually 9 out of 10 times usually right. Um, usually Sean Ross Sapp does not lead or Dave Meltzer most of the time does not really, uh, you know, lead you to the wrong stuff. So um, I'll have links down below for you guys. Thank you guys for stopping in and watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.